Welcome. So today I have no idea where I'm going to start, but we're just going to dive right into it and hopefully it just comes all together. So, um, it started two days ago and, um, I did something that I wasn't very proud of and I woke up the following morning and as I'm walking down the steps, I kind of feel like this prick in my conscience. And I feel like I want to run and hide in shame. And I thought to myself, what are you going to do? Are you going to choose to distance yourself in shame? Or are you going to stand in the truth? And then I heard the Lord say, my spirit, eat. Just eat. And so he gave me a song. I can't remember off the top of my head how it goes right now, but I, I did write it down. Um, eat in the presence of your enemies. Eat in the presence of your enemies. Don't weaken in faith. Trust that I do just what I say. Don't hide from me in shame. Don't waver in unbelief, but eat, eat in the presence of your enemies or something like that. <laughs> Anywho, so as I'm getting this song and I'm singing it in my heart, he brings me over to um, Romans chapter four, verse 18 through 20, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, well, specifically really verse 23 and Psalms 23, verse five and four, but it's really verse five. But um, just a real quick time out. I think it's interesting. Um, well, for me, I never want to come off as somebody that has it all together in my actions and my thoughts and in my words. I don't like to play that game. And I think it's interesting that in the church we have lied for so long, played a role for so long that when somebody comes up and they just say what it is exactly for what it is, you know, people want to thank them at the end of it and say, oh, we appreciate you being transparent. Something's wrong with this picture. Like, why is his honesty of what he's going through transparent? And the reason why it's so transparent is because we're so used to lying. <laughs> we're so used to lying and pretending to be something you know, and to fit in this religious mold of what it means to be a child of God, that we can't even be real with each other. And, and on top of that, we don't really help each other. How can I speak into your life when I can't even be real with you about what's going on in my own life? And as we're talking about the realities of the struggles that we deal with, you have no way of actually encouraging me in the truth because I'm too busy being fake. Real quick. <laughs> I wanted to bring up Paul because Paul says something that is so beautiful and, and I know that every believer can kind of feel where he's coming from when he, when he talks about this. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14, he says, Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but I do one thing, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Now, the reason why I think this is so beautiful is because number one, he's saying, don't think that just because I'm delivering this message to you means that I've got it all together. I mean, the Lord may drop in your heart to, to talk about healing and wholeness to someone when, when you're dealing with sickness and disease. You know, some, he may drop something in your spirit to say something to somebody towards or about prosperity. And you're thinking, but Lord, like I got like $15 in my account. <laughs> we always want to compare the message and the truth of God based to our circumstances. You know, um, 
talking about freedom and living or being made righteous and holy before God because Christ himself is our righteousness and our holiness. He is our sanctification. We feel like we can't really talk about these things because I'm still kind of struggling with these things. But your struggle in it does not change the fact that it is the truth and it is the truth of God that gives life. It is the truth of God that sets free. So regardless of what your circumstances are looking like in the moment, looking like in the moment, we still stand firm on the truth of God based on what God has said, not based on our circumstances. So, um, you know, you don't have it all together yet, yet, but we continue to forget what is past and we press on into Christ, knowing that God is faithful to perform the very thing that he has started. He started it. He's going to finish it. Continue. But, um, so he started me out in, in Romans chapter four. Now I kind of skipped out like small little pieces. I recommend that you do go back and read it all together for yourself because it is some good stuff. But uh, Romans chapter four, verse 18 through 21, it says against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, he believed God. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his own body was as good as dead and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised. So we're believing in the hope of God that says, you know what? I see that I am weak in my own ability to overcome this, but God, I know that you who made the promise in making me righteous and giving me the Holy Spirit that you're not going to leave me where I'm at. So I continue to press on into uh, what you have said about me and not what I'm looking at at the moment. You know, some people can struggle with alcohol. Some people can struggle with pornography. Some people just struggle with lust altogether. Uh, some people can struggle with fear or doubt. You know, they always think the worst. So when I'm going through these things and I feel disappointed in myself, you know, I see the Lord saying, don't consider the weakness of your own flesh. Don't consider your own inability. Don't consider the fact that you failed again, but consider and remember the hope that you have in me. Remember who I am and what I've done for you. Stand firm on that and trust me that I am more than able to save you and keep pressing in to Christ. He goes on to say in Hebrews 10 verse 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. So in the midst of you seeing this mountain before you, it seems so big. I want to get rid of this behavior that I'm practicing, but I don't know how to. Again, just as Abraham saw the death of his own body and the death of the womb of his wife, he still held on to the promise that God had made and that he would make good on what he said. And in Hebrews, it says to hold on to the confession of our faith, knowing that he that promised it is faithful. So regardless of what it looks like in the moment, regardless of what it feels like, stand firm in the fact that number one, you are righteous, that you are an offspring of the most high God and that he is more than able to save you. Whatever is going on in your soul, he is more than able to heal that. Which brings me to Psalms 23 verse 5, and I love this because it says you have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And I remember reading that years ago. And when I think about a table being prepared in the presence of my enemies, I used to think like carnally, naturally, you know, people I don't like, they're going to see me shining one day. <laughs> I'm a stun on them. And um, then the Lord showed me that it's not your natural enemies. It's, it's the spiritual enemies, the things that you don't like, that in the presence of the things that you don't like, the things that are against you, he says, eat. What are we to eat? Body and blood, baby. Come feast on my love. He has prepared the feast of Christ before you. And he's saying, in the presence of the things that you don't like, and the presence of the things that you wish would just go away, the things that you so want to change about yourself. 
in the presence of all of that, in the face of it all, eat and feast on me and trust that he is more than able to save, standing firm in the gift of righteousness, Christ Jesus, and feasting in spite of all of the feelings that want to nag at you and prick at you and, and shame you. You are feasting on the, the sacrifice and the work of Christ. And he is more than able to save. I don't think that there is a single believer that doesn't want to live a holy life. I don't think that there's a single believer that goes to church to find loopholes every Sunday. <laughs> that we are looking for excuses to sin that we are looking for ways to just barely do enough to make it into heaven. Honestly, scripturally, that doesn't even make sense because it's nothing that we do that has given us the inheritance of heaven other than the work of Christ and Christ alone. But we don't gather there every Sunday to see if there's ways that we can work around the, 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 the word of God so that we could just do what we wanna do. I believe that we are people that are looking for a way out always always looking for freedom from addictions, freedom from wrong mindsets, freedom from, you know, bad behaviors. Nobody wants to stay the way that they are. So I think this false idea um, is ridiculous. And I think that the idea of what we think Christianity should look like hinders us more than anything. If we could just, number one, understand that we all are not perfect in our soul. We have been made perfect in our spirit before God. The way God sees us is in the perfection of Christ. But in the area of our soul, we all need deliverance. We all need a change of thinking. I was actually talking with my aunt this morning and I had never saw it that way. And the Holy Spirit began to unpack it for me this morning. Not saying it's all the way unpacked, but during service uh, last Sunday, I was sitting there and I heard ashes for beauty 24-7. So I was like, okay. So I wrote it down, Ashes for Beauty for, you know, 24-7. So this morning, I wanted to know what does it mean? What, is, what, is, what does ashes mean? Ashes for Beauty. The powdery residue left after the burning of a substance. Ash, the remain of something destroyed. The old man was destroyed, but he left the ashes. The ashes is what we lift up to God 24-7. We are lifting up the ashes. That old way of thinking that remained. The old thoughts that remained in the old man that has been done away with remains. But that's what we are lifting up to God. And as we lift those ashes, our God gives us beauty. And I just thought that that was so beautiful because he's not saying that the old man is still there. He's saying the old man is done away with. That is, that is passed away. Behold, beloved, all has been made new in your spirit, man. You are born anew, but in your soul, that old nature that died has left ashes. Lift those up to me. And as you lift the ashes of the old man, that old way of thinking, those old thoughts and behaviors, I will give you beauty in place of that. So kind of all that I want to say. Let's just be honest with each other. Let's be real. You know, I feel, I like to say, you know, I'm not a robot. Anytime somebody says, you know, something to me, like my son, uh, I might be ranting at this point. <laughs> my son said to me recently towards the end of December last year, he said, you know, I didn't think you would do that. You know, I didn't expect that from you. And I looked at him, I said, baby, the same way that I tell you that you need Jesus, the same way that I need Jesus. I'm not telling you that you need him because I think it's something cute and religious to do. We are all constantly in need of Christ. There are so many things that need to be changed in our way of thinking and the way that we see things. And so the same way that I tell you that you need him, trust me, mommy needs him just as much. If we could just be honest with each other, I think that we would help each other more in this growth and, and developing in Christ, opposed to pretending like we have it all together and coming off weird to those that have not come yet, you know, as if we're not being realistic or, you know, she lives on a whole nother different planet that's just not reality. It is reality. It is the most 
beautiful message that anyone could ever hear, that God would so love us that he would give himself and then bring us into his family, not holding our sins against us, but walking with us side by side through life and instructing us and teaching us and all the while in our stumbles, him encouraging us, reminding us of our righteousness, reminding us of his strength and his ability to say, reminding us that he's never leaving us or forsaking us, reminding us that he is present and he cares. It's just beautiful. And um, yeah, so let's just, let's, let's be honest with each other and, and stop putting on the mask because nobody's gonna get healed that way. So I know that you've been blessed in your hearing before I continue on my rant. Uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Family! Mm.